<laughs> well, part of undivided attention, don't you understand, Crystal? Hey, let's all silence our phones. Silence the cell phone. Thank you all for joining me for part two of Max and Me. <laughs> It's bad anytime you wake up and you're pounding, throbbing, I don't want to be alive hangover is the least of your concerns. <laughs> when the first thought in your head fog manifests as a long moan, groan, growl to greet the day, fuck! <laughs> Max Munger jumped me outside a bar last night. <laughs> My best buddy Ryan's reaction when he gets a call from me the next day, I tell him what happened, not quite as poetically and eloquently as I've told all of you. What the fuck? Are you kidding? What, Max? Ryan and I had colored Easter eggs at the ranch with Max and the ranch owner's kids a couple weeks earlier. Dude, his parents are going to flip. My brother Shane reacted similarly. What? Are you serious, Max? Wait, Max? What am I supposed to do? Like, go have a talk with him or something? <laughs> and then my brother, Shad. <laughs> I just had lunch with him two days ago at his parents' house down in Tubac. Max fucking told me he was trying to be more Buddhist. <laughs> that afternoon, the day after, happened to be a barbecue gathering of a bunch of old family friends, many mutual with Max from the same circles. And the only thing that made it any easier for me was telling the story. Telling everyone else what a prick Max had been. And a couple days later when I sent him a bill for a visit to urgent care for my lost hat and broken glasses and included a few photos of my scabby face, I celebrated within myself because I had addressed it and I had sent it to his parents' house. And that was the only jab I managed to get in. But the day I sent that package to Max, I received a call back from my brother Shad. Listen, granted, it is fucked to beat up a friend, but don't play the victim. Acknowledge your role. Recognize that you played a part. And remember what got you here, and it wasn't just Max. You ever been beaten up, taken a punch? Had your face bloodied by a fist, or in this case, a wall? Reflection was hard. Hard to see the me in the story I was telling others and myself about the incident. I didn't see Max again for nearly three years. That grudge, I went ahead and held on to. I had traveled home to the valley of our youth for the wedding weekend of my best friend, Ryan. A wedding while well, I was going through divorce. Still reeling from the afternoon, my wife sat on the couch beside me and announced, we're done. There's someone else. Hard to see the me in the story she was telling and the story I told myself about my own dissolving marriage. But the star-filled night before Ryan's wedding, a group of old friends gathered on a brick patio, each of us a part of the others in our shared past, each with our own role in the present. Max was there with his wife, the girl I had known for one evening in 93. They both wore their hair parted down the middle, twisted into long, beautiful braids. Handsome fucker, Max. <laughs> beautiful Max. I approached him at his table. You and me. Let's take a walk. We were in Tubac, the village where Max had grown up, less than a few dirt road blocks from the adobe home where he'd been raised. I want to talk about that night, Max. But let me explain, Shay. No, 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 no. That night has passed, Max. It is the past. You were there, and I was there, and we both played our part. We know what happened, and right now, we're going to let that go. It's over, 
It's done. Done. Without saying more, Max produced a giant thick, uh, finger thick joint, <laughs> which he tucked gently into my shirt pocket. <laughs> Standing in the dark in the middle of a dirt road under that starry sky with a silhouette of the Santa Rita Mountains nearby, Max and I hugged. And at that moment, like in this moment, I could see myself a little more clearly. Yes. <laughs> Thank you all.